to give his life for the sins of all mankind. Such a perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ, O Holy One, Jesus Christ. a perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Hail the once despised Give us all our sins. His mercy endures forever.
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins unto God. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess, confess that we have sinned against thee, thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. undone. We, we have not loved thee with our whole heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, have merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, through repentance and amendment of life, the grace and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose glory is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house in Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir? But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur to the Chaldeans 
to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, to your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 27. And normally when you say the psalm in half verse, you say the psalm after each asterisk, which is antiphony. When you say the psalm <clears throat> responsively, as you can see in your book, it's by the numbers. And you also can say the psalm in unison. So today, we're going to say the psalm antiphonically, which normally they say is at first. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength, the strength of, my of my life, life. of whom of then whom shall I be afraid? afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes, foes and my adversaries, adversaries who, stumbled who stumbled and, and fell. fell. Though any army should encamp against me, yet, yet my heart, heart shall, shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet if will I put, I put my, trust my trust in him. In him. <coughs> Continue. One thing have I asked of the Lord. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord. And to seek, seek him, him in, in his, his temple. temple. That's you. For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in a shelter. He, he shall, shall hide, hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, his dwelling and, and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above, above my, my enemies, enemies round about me. me. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. That's you. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy, Have mercy on, on me, me and, and answer me. me. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, your face Lord, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn, turn away, away your servant, servant in displeasure. displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do, Do not, not forsake me, O God, God of my salvation. salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, O Lord, Lord will sustain, sustain me. me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me, me on a level path, path because, because of my, my enemies. enemies. Deliver me not to the hand, into the hand of my ad adversaries. For false, For false witnesses, witnesses have risen, risen up, up against, against me, and also those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord? In the, in the land, land of, of the living. living. O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, Be strong and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for, for the Lord. Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. 
Their end is destructions, their God is the belly. And their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven and is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today and tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as, hen, as a hen gathers her brood on her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you would not let me. May the words of my mouth and meditation within our hearts, may they always find acceptance in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Historically, there are some interesting one-liners spoken by famous men that reflect an obvious lack of vision. For example, in 1943, IBM Chairman Thomas J. Watson said, I think there's a world market for about five computers. In 1911, France's top military commander, Marshal Foch, said, airplanes are interesting toys, but are of no use militarily. William Everett, who ran the U.S. Patent Office in the early part of the last century, said that he would soon have to close up shop because everything had already been invented. Among the hundreds of thousands of new inventions that he missed were televisions, ballpoint pens, <laughs> jet planes, Walkman radios, disposable diapers. My goodness, I don't know what he would have done with the... the uh, New phones, iPads, all this stuff. The point here is that if these statements had been taken too seriously and never challenged, they would have clouded our mind's vision and thus stifled the hope for a better future. For where there is no true vision, the Bible tells us, people perish. When Jesus thought about the great historical city of Jerusalem, this supposed city of God and center for religious practice, he could not help but lament over a city that for the most part had lost its true vision and was practically the complete opposite of what it should be and could be. He saw a city with many were, who were hungry, homeless, and ill. But he also saw a city with many who had resources and skills who could make a difference, but were not doing a thing to make a difference. It was a city that needed direction, that vision of a place where God's people so loved him that they worked to support each other and did it with the confidence and conviction of a brighter, brighter future for all. Jesus could give them this vision. He could teach them what the power of God's love would mean to their lives. But instead of giving him a chance, they rejected him. In yesterday's Bible study, we were doing, we were talking about cancel, canceling uh, um, culture. What we see today is the folks that were leaders wanted to cancel out Jesus, get rid of him don't want to hear his ideas, don't want to hear his vision. And as a result, they would suffer greatly for this. One of the hardest things 
a parent has to face is the rejection of their experience and advice by their child. There are many hardships in life that we have to struggle through, and when possible, we would like to see our children spared at least from some of that kind of experience. But there are times when a child, no matter what we do or say, will not listen and is determined to do it in their own way. And we can only pray that their hope and confidence for a better future is not destroyed by a negative experience. Forty years after the Jewish leadership had Sakim to have Jesus put to death, Jerusalem itself would be a heap of ruins. That disaster in 70 AD was, as some scholars feel, the direct consequence of the rejection of Jesus Christ. Had the Jews accepted Jesus' vision in way of love and abandoned the way of power politics, Rome would have never descended on them, wiping out the whole creation in sense, wiping out the temple, and destroying the homes and many of the people. It is the fact of history, even in time, that the nation which rejects God is doomed to disaster. You know, when we stop to think about the many things in life that besiege our society today, from the subtles of racism and sexism to the outright violent crimes, as we see happening in our streets today, with folks with guns, parents killing children, children killing parents, and children killing children, and going on from there. We can only say that we are in a crisis, a crisis more than what we're facing in terms of the COVID crisis. Like the Jewish leadership of 30 AD, has our leadership also lost the ability to articulate a vision of hope, hope for our people's future? The picture of Jesus lamenting over Jerusalem can also be thought of him lamenting over America. But his greatest lamentation may be for the church, the body of which he is the head and all baptized people are its members. Whatever the excuse or whatever the reasons, we must face the fact that for the most part, the church has failed to articulate Christ's vision of hope to a society that is showing more and more signs of hopelessness. See, ministry is about caring for people, caring for people, for we indeed are our brother and sister's keepers, and Christ will hold us accountable for that. If we are to be the church of Jesus Christ, then we've got to be about the work of the Lord. The church is of no use to our society if the bulk of our time and effort goes into maintaining buildings, refurbishing icons, worshiping our own liturgies, or trying to be a new social club catering to the wealthy and famous. We have to get back to caring for people and perhaps the best place to begin is with each other here in our own church. Who and what are we as Christians in today's society? Well, for me, I, I always go to that second chapter of the second letter of Peter, verse 9, to answer that question for me, which says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people chosen in order that we may proclaim the mighty acts of God who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, we are the ones Christ has called to do the job. And the vision we must have is the same one used by our Lord to explain his mission. And that is the most powerful words that we find in the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah, which says, the spirit of the Lord is upon us and has anointed us with power to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the hearts that life stress has broken, to proclaim liberty to those who have been captives of sin, and release to those whose souls have been locked away from God, to proclaim now as the time of the Lord's favor towards us, to comfort all who mourn that they may receive the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Thus, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. 
You see, if our society is ever to capture this vision of hope for all its people, I believe the church, the church is going to have to take the lead and articulate that vision to the rest of society. And we must begin in our own backyard. It starts with us here at Christ the King, the church itself, yes. And we can do it. We can do it because Christ will give us all the strength and the power we need to do it. It starts with us caring about one another as we try to come back from what we've been facing these last two years with the pandemic. It is time again to reach out to others, to let them know the goodness of the Lord's favor, to let them know that in spite of all that's going on in the wars all the world, Christ is still in control. We have to let the world know that indeed, that we have a trust in the Almighty and the power of his presence in our life. And yes, we're going to shout it from the highest rooftop and tell them that we care. Yes, Christ can help us do it. He is watching us, waiting to gather us in love under his everlasting arms like a hen gathers her brood. But the question is, will we let him? Will we let him? Will we let him strengthen us? Will we let him guide us? Will we, will we let him take us through the trials and tribulations that may be ahead? Will we trust him to give us the power to keep on keeping on? Christ is counting on us to trust in him. And the more we do it, the more we do it here in our own church, the more we will be witnesses of his abiding and loving presence in the rest of the world. Christ has given us a great opportunity. Let's not lose it. Let's use it and serve him unitedly. Amen. 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 Now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we ascribe his most justly due, almighty majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth this day, now, and forevermore. Amen. Let us stand as we reaffirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin or in page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people we will use form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all, all may one. be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your and name may be glorified by all people. people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may and be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on, on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our, our works, works may find, find favor in, in your sight. sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they, they may be delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That the light perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, we humbly come before you asking that the power of your grace will continue to strengthen us in the midst of all that's going on in this world. Let there be peace in the world, especially in Ukraine and elsewhere, that the power of your grace may continue to be witnessed wherever it may be. And finally, O Lord, almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will wherever we may be. This we pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. May you greet Amen. one another in peace and in love. Before we proceed with the announcements, we're asking that all member vestry members come forward for the installation. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn around and face me. Okay. Yeah, I don't see what the devil are you all doing here? <laughs> Father, I present to you these persons to be installed as vestry members of Christ the King Church. Do you, here in the presence of this congregation, accept the responsibility of the office to which you have been elected? I do. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. I do. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have called these persons to this office in this your church. Guide them, we humbly ask, in this important work so that all their aims and purposes may be to the strengthening of the work in this parish and the support of the church's mission throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. In the name of God, 
and of this congregation, I welcome you to the office of vestry. May God bless you in this important ministry and strengthen you in the work you must do on behalf of all of us. I bless you, keep you, God be with you. Amen. Amen. Give them a hand, they got work ahead of them. <laughs> Good morning, Christ the King. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus. We want to welcome all of you who are here physically, as well as those who are with us on Zoom. Christ the King Episcopal Church um, is able to be joined online, and we hope that you feel a sense of connection as we share this time together. There are many other opportunities to get involved with Christ the King, even remotely. So to learn more about membership, baptism, or confirmation, or to receive emails about upcoming Christ the King church events, just visit us at www.christthekingnj.org or email ctk at christthekingnj.org and we will be happy to help you in any way that we can. Remember, we Episcopalians believe in a loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please do not forget to read the grace and peace to all members of the Episcopal Diocese of New Jersey, which is from the RRR Task Force. Christ the King movie night. A question of faith. Due to the anticipated inclement weather that we had uh, last evening, the event is now going to be on Saturday, March 19th, 2022. The time to arrive is 5.30 p.m. because the movie starts promptly at 6 p.m. Cost is free, snacks will be, provi be provided, but feel free to bring your own snacks. But we need for you to RSV the church office at 609-877-2992 as soon as possible. The Epiphany to Lenten Special Study, there are three more Saturdays with Canon Wynn, uh, Where Do We Go From Here by Dr. David Jemiah. Um, on how tomorrow's prophecies foreshadow today's problems. There is paper shredding events. If you have items that needed to be shred, all events are from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., rain or shine. The dates are March 20th, April 10th, and May 15th at the Burlington County Resource Recovery Complex, 22,000 Burlington, Columbus, Road in Florence, New Jersey. Save the date for Sunday, September the 11th. The Men of Christ the King's annual jazz luncheon will take place. Coming soon to Christ the King Church, the Global Outreach Project. As spring approaches and you are doing your spring cleaning, please place gently used clothing and household items aside in preparation for our next outreach project. Don't take them to Goodwill or to the uh, thrift shop. You're going to bring them here. Hold them and look for additional information coming soon in the bulletin. Thank you from the Parish Life Committee. Let's not forget in the bulletin the information on week two, the way of love in Lent life transform. The journey through Lent into Easter is a journey with Jesus. We are baptized into his life, self-giving and death. Then we rise in hope to life transform. This Lent communities, uh, this Lent, communities are invited to walk with Jesus in his way of love and into the experience of transformed life. And it gives you the information that you may follow for the week. Mandatory choir practice. There will be a choir practice meeting on Saturday, March 19, 2022, at 12 noon. No exceptions. New members are welcome. Contact right. Candid Witt <laughs> if you plan to be there. And you know he always says there's no exceptions given. 
The Men of Christ the King's monthly meeting is held the second Saturday of every month at 10 a.m. on Zoom, and all Men of Christ the King are invited. The next meeting is April the 9th. Life Group Ministries, the Women's Life Group will meet Thursday, March 17th on Zoom. Time is 3 to 4.15. The topic, dealing with aging. aging. Any questions or for information, contact Carolyn Booker at 412-337-2576. Howard University Scholarships for Students of Jamaican Descent. They are offering scholarships to Jamaican students or students of Jamaican descent at Howard University. Sometimes these scholarships are overlooked, so please circulate among your Jamaican friends, families, and associates. Bible studies on Monday and Wednesdays have resumed by the Reverend Sheldon Radix. Don't forget to read the extensive uh, bulletin from the Bishop's Corner. And also in there, you will notice that there is someone that you may know, or even that person's father, Miss Valeda Win Guerrero. So please read the detailed information. The Bishop Search and Nominations Committee has released a detailed timeline of the ongoing process for the election of our next bishop. So please read all of that information as well as his speech from the convention. OBM Technology Summit announcement on uh, you are invited to the Office of Black Ministries Virtual Technology Summit. This summit is to open to the entire church and is in collaboration with the Domestic and Foreign Ministry Soci uh, Missionary Society. For additional information, please Reference the flyer below to review the summit schedule. And basically, it starts March the 30th from 1 to 3 p.m. on Zoom, and all are welcome. Also, Lenten book study for younger adults. If God is love, don't be a jerk. The information for the discussion of that is also listed in the bulletin, as well as how you can join. The PYO Music Institute. There is a list of the season's performance schedule in your bulletin. And this season, nearly 550 students ages 7 to 21 participate across the program divisions within the Philadelphia Youth Orchestra Music Institute. So for complete information, tickets, and performance updates, you may visit pyomusic.org. There is Stations of the Cross that are taking place right now here at Christ the King in person each Friday night at 7 p.m. And finally, Christ the King, we have two black history presentations that will take place. So if those parishioners are here, would you please come forward? Christ the King, I say to you, have a happy, blessed, and healthy week. Also, don't forget to wear your mask as we are trying to come out of the pandemic into an endemic, and hopefully one day we won't even have to wear a mask so that we can all identify each other. <laughs> I thank you, Christ the King. Thank you. Amen. Offer God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows unto the Most High. The hymn for the offertory, hymn number 401, 401.
come from thee, O Lord. O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Amen. We continue our service with the great thanksgiving and Eucharistic prayer on page 340 of your bulletin, page 340 of your prayer book, sorry, page 11 of your bulletins. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right and bolden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to be triumphant over evil and to live no longer into ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord. to thee, O holy Lord, our God, for that thou didst create between heaven and earth, and did make us in thy own image, and of thy own tender mercy, did, this, this, does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, drank it for all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of our sins. Do this often, as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord, Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make these thy holy gifts, which we offer to thee, the memorial of thy Son has commanded us to make, having remembrance in his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. 
And we must humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us with thy Holy Spirit and bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearest and beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy Father goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. And grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive thy most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we may, and all the church, may be made one body with him, and he may dwell within us, and we in him, to the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, and in the unity of the Holy Gospel, all honor and glory be yon to thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Presume to come to this thy table, table merciful, merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not, not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him 
and he in us. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. Amen. The body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord, body of Christ, bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. The body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. <laughs> the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life. The body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserve thy body and soul and give you everlasting life.
at this time we'll take a moment to pray for those celebrating birthdays anniversaries maybe traveling there's no one on our list for this coming week but there might be somebody experienced birthdays we'll pray for them anyhow watch over all your children O lord as their days increase to the blessing of another year thus a birthday bless and guide them wherever they may be strengthen them when they stand comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful Raise them up should they fall, and in their heart may your peace which passeth all understanding abide all the days of their life. And all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let's also pray for those maybe celebrating anniversaries. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray upon your service, who we'll begin another year, thus an anniversary celebration. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life, that their love for each other may be a love and reflection of their love for you, you for them. This we pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for all those who will be traveling this week, especially remember Dr. Joe will be traveling uh, this week, at the end of this week. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve and watch over all your servants who are traveling. We especially pray for our own Dr. Joseph Stewart. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger. And bring them in safety to their journeys and returning them home safely to us, we pray. In all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let's continue to pray those we love, those who are ill, those in our families who are rest heavy in our hearts and minds this morning. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to their never failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that through the power of Jesus Christ, the great physician of souls, you will touch them and strengthen them. And we know that you are doing for them better things that we can desire or pray for. We continue to ask it only in the name of he who died it was raised for us jesus christ our lord Amen. we continue to pray for persons who are in trouble or in bereavement especially those who lost lives in the war 
in Ukraine. O merciful Father, who has taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men, look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom our prayers are offered this day. Remember them, O Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them your peace. This we pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us also pray for our country. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly ask that you may always, we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from the violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united peoples, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endure with the spirit of wisdom those to whom, in your name, we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask Father Raddick if he would give us a closing prayer before we do our closing thanksgiving. Okay. Heavenly Father, in your loving wisdom, I ask you, dear God, to touch the hearts and souls of two men whose influence touches everything in this world. Their God guide their misguided thoughts as they believe that they can recreate dynasties that no longer exist. And in their desire to do these things, they're causing nothing but heartache, chaos, and war. So we ask their God to touch the hearts of those two men in this world that have all that power and show them their God the corruption of their ways. Show them their God the inhumane endings to their thoughts and desires and help their God that you can bring them back into your fold for I know all people are yours, all children are yours and you'd like them all to be under your banner. So I ask these things through your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us do the post communion prayer found on page 339 of your prayer books or page 17 of your um, bulletin. Almighty and ever living God, God, we most, most heartily thank thee for thou dost feed us in these in holy mysteries ministry, with the spiritual the food of the most precious, precious body and blood of thy of Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And dost assure, assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness, and goodness towards, towards us, and that, that we are very members and corporate in the mystical in body of thy the Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. kingdom. And, and we, we humbly beseech, beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, Father so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, Lord to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world, world without end. end. Amen. Amen. And may the peace that God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of thy love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
hearts before thy cross to finish thy salvation. Accept, O Lord, this service of our lips and the service of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 